Okay, fellow YouTubers. Um, so all the guys in the Grizzly and Yamaha, sorry, the Yamaha, Rhino, and Grizzlies have issues with oiling the wrist pins on their um, bikes. They, uh, they, they rev to 8,500, 9,000 RPM sometimes. Uh, the wrist pin has um, oiling issues. And to me personally, I think Yamaha kind of dropped the ball on this motor. I'm not sure about the 700cc motors, but the 660cc motors have wrist pin issues. I have three motors here, and it's all the same issue. Wrist pins uh, and detonation is one big key, but um, I'll show you this piston here. So basically what you do is you're draining a, you're drilling, drilling a hole, a 1 16th hole into the oil cavity on the, on the actual casing. It's a 1 16th hole. It's on a 45 degree angle, and you point it to the base of the back of the piston. I'll, I'll show you real quick here on the um, the motor, but first I'm going to explain how the oiling gets done on this motor. I'll give the oiling explanation on this motor, how it goes. So basically, the oil pump here goes, gets driven off a driven gear on the other side of the motor, left-hand side of the case. The pump goes through here, pressurizes this, val this valley right here. This is the pressure relief valve. I'm not sure the actual pressure. I'll look it up because I'm actually going to try to bring up a 2 PSI if I can. goes up through here. This is cross-drilled the casing right here. So it goes up through here. And then basically it goes across this cross channel here, goes to the other side of the case. Now this oil gets fed into this case here, goes in this valley here. Uh, another thing is this case is very crappy done. That chamber there is about, you know, an inch and a half deep. Hard to see it with the flash, but inch and a half deep. The oil turbulates in there, and then it goes into here, into the filter housing. Once it goes to the filter housing, it smashes on here. There's a cross drilled here. They drill here, they press a ball in. Anyways, it goes in here. Swirls up in here, outside your oil filter, and then go filters through the media, and then in the center here. After it goes through the center of the filter, it's basically filtered oil. It's pressurized, obviously. And then it's distributed, basically, up here, in this area here, and this side one. This one here goes to the this side here, which is a transmission gear. And then the top one goes in two banjos, which is the one you see on the motor. Uh, basically, this one here goes to the head, and this one here goes to the other side, the casing. This side of the casing here goes through basically this vein here, uh, which is the one we're actually going to drill into. But this vein goes in here. There's a collar on the other side of the crank here. It goes on here and pressurizes the oil in the center of this crank. The oil gets disputed to the center here, which goes through the center here, and it oils the inside of this needle bearing, and then oil goes into the wet clutch area, and then gets spread out. Now, what we do is, the oil, so, so basically in this motor, the, the crank does not get oiled, sprayed on it, or anything. It's, it's basically a splashing motion. So basically you have, if you look right here, your dipstick sits about here. So basically here is about, is per oil. The crankcase is above that. So basically there's no oil that actually gets on the oil, on the actual crank itself. Uh, what gets thrown on the crank is basically the crankshaft will get, will pick up oil here and it'll splash around here and it'll splash the bearings. It's kind of a crappy design. The gearbox actually has pressurized oil on this shaft here so this shaft gets fed for oil and then just sprays out the oil into the into this gearbox in the gears itself now the crankshaft to a lot of these motors you see here this one leaned out but also had a lot of crank uh the pins are very stiff uh the crank uh bottom piston ring ring is uh burnt pretty bad uh these are known that are known to do that it's uh, i got three motors here there's two more back there and they're the same thing, the wrist pins overheat and they burn up. So basically what you do is, you're gonna drill a tiny little hole, a 1 16th hole, there's a drill bit here, 1 16th drill bit, you drill it in a 45 degree angle. So you drill it in a 45, 45 degree angle and basically goes into the oil cavity right here, I'll show you up with the camera here. So basically, I'll put the case up this here. The good old film with one arm and try and do stuff the other arm. Okay, so anyways, you can see down there, there's light. That passage goes straight down. It's cross-drilled into this area here, which disputes oil to the uh, uh, to the um, wet clutch area. So anyways, what you're doing is here, I'll put the drill bit in. You put it at a 45 degree angle and you try to aim it. So basically it's firing into the side of the piston right here. So this one's in now. I can see it in there. Yeah, there it is, okay. So you look into the hole. There you go, you're into the cavity. Um, the next one I did, I shifted it a little over a little bit more. This one here is a little bit more into, uh, you might be able to see it in this one here. Yeah, it's a little more centered. I was able to get this one a little more in the center of the piston. So I'll put the crank in real quick and I'll show you what, what, what I mean by this area here. So there's your tiny little oil hole. So basically the crank is right here in the center. So basically it's going to consist, consistently spray the side of the, uh, 
right here. It's gonna spray the side of the uh, rod. I'll see if I can put the, pro the, anyways, as the rod goes down, it'll spin here. We'll do a half stroke. So the piston's right about center here. So if you look right here, this is gonna be spraying basically, so they come across, it's gonna hit the side of the piston right here. It's gonna spray the side of the piston. As it gets lower, lower and lower, it's getting closer to the wrist pin. So right now we're basically gonna be spraying the actual wrist pin, the bottom of the piston. So this will actually aid in cooling the piston off and pulling some heat away from the actual piston down the oil. So as you come down, it'll collapse there. I can't go anymore because of the actual pin there real quick. But if you pull us down, put a smaller needle in there. I'll put a small one here somewhere. Yeah, I'll have a smaller one. But as it goes down, it'll spray that area. It'll spray, spray, spray. And then basically it's not plugged off 100%. There you can see it behind there. It's still spraying this, this back to the piston. As it goes, the piston rotates forward here. You're gonna go up stroke. And then your oil holes right here, I'll put it in the back of place here. Okay, so the piston on this side here. Now you're still behind, you're actually spraying the wrist pin still. So and that goes around upwards here. As it keeps going up, it's gonna spray the back side of the piston. So the oil will get hit, will hit the side of the rod and it'll spread out. Um, the one thing, like I said, this motor, these motors don't have any oiling for the motor. So basically rely on uh, oil flinging up on this side here, the balance shaft on this, based on, here's a balance shaft. But on this side here, your chain picks up oil and it'll splash around this area. It's kind of primitive. Uh, so basically if you notice the piston uh, discoloration on this side, Basically, this side of the motor gets most majority of the, of the oil on this side. On the other side of the case here, you got gear splashing and stuff. But the only access point you have is basically right here for oil to get into the crankcase area. A lot of the gear mesh area is not going to push oil into here. You also have your balance shaft here. So basically, this is going to put oil in the cylinder. Yes, you might you'll lose a little bit of oil pressure, but these motors don't rely on oil pressure to run, really. Um, so I'm going to see when I get this thing. I'm doing three of them right now. So we're gonna see what happens uh, with oil pressure wise. Um, the relief valve, I'm gonna try shooting it with a pop can. I'm gonna test, I have a tester, I can test uh, pop off pressures for carbs. So I'm gonna see what it does stock. I'm gonna see online what the actual um, Yamaha spec is. Okay, so Yamaha recommends, well their spec is 9.2 PSI hot at 1500 RPM. You just about 10 PSI per 1000 RPM. Uh, so if you do the math real quick here, if you start at 9 PSI 1500, you know, just do a quick math 10 all the way up to 8,500 RPM, where it's rev to your 80 PSI. The relief pressure's at 90 PSI, so it won't go above 90 PSI, they say. So I'm probably gonna leave that alone. There's rumors online that they only ran like 20 some PSI. Uh, I really don't wanna take this motor apart twice, so I'll probably leave it alone for now on my Rhino motor. I'll, I'm doing one motor now, the round motor, so I'll, I'll leave it apart right now. I won't touch the pressure relief valve. I'll leave it alone, I'll, just, I'll take it apart, inspect it, make sure there's nothing damaged on it. But uh, basically, um, if it runs 90 PSI, that's fine for me. Um, so basically, I will lose a little pressure uh, uh, pressure on uh, a little bit of volume because there's holes here, but I, I'd rather have a little bit of oil on the cylinder because a lot of these engines fail, not because of gear set uh, issues. They fail because of wrist pins and cranks cranks fail. Uh, so basically, like this is my mod. A lot of guys done this in the YZ450, uh, I believe in 250s too back in the day. Uh, they were having some uh, wrist pin issues with revving them up so long and then one thing with CVTs is they're always in the high RPM, so you're always revving up. So, um, yeah, a lot of guys have done this in the Rhino forms, and people have asked questions how it looks and stuff, and I've, you know, had questions, and I did my own homework. Um, I'm pretty good to do technical stuff. So, anyways, um, this motor I'm doing, I'm building motors right now. I'm building three motors, so if you guys are interested in the, in the builds, I could do some, some video autography of that. Uh, post below. It's up to you guys. Um, I don't mind filming. I uh, show you guys what mod's done. So basically, mod wise, these two motors. So basically, I have three motors: two Rhinos and one Grizzly. Uh, both Rhinos are getting the same builds. They have fully ported heads, uh, kibble valves. I believe the brand's called um, three angle valve job. Uh, the heads are just resurfaced. Uh, CP piston. I think I believe it's ten and a half to one. As we're going to eleven to one, either one ten and a half, eleven and a half to one. I'll have to run ninety one octane. It is what it is. Um, the Hot Shot Stage One cam uh is a four mil circuit crank so basically with the t over the one mil over uh piston and the crank we're going to be from 686 to 719 
So this motor should be pretty good. My motor has a JBS clutch going into it, brand new. So I have a lot of parts going on my Rhino. Uh, I'm on, I think, 25 inch, 26 inch tires. So it should be pretty interesting. My buddy's Rhino is basically the same build, but he has no clutch and uh, exact same motor builds. And we're gonna see basically what the difference is between the two motor builds, if they're both strokers. Um, my Grizzly is basically gonna be a stock crank, but this, everything's the same build, ported heads, same valves, uh, same pistons. The only difference is that I have uh, a stock crank in it. So I'm gonna have a lower compression ratio. Uh, I didn't feel the need for the stroker in the uh, Grizzly because the Grizzlies are gonna be quick enough uh, for what I'm gonna do with it. But anyway, so I hope this uh, helps some people get some rough idea how what this oil mod is. Um, it's not very hard, guys. Like you basically picked, I picked, I basically picked up the a Bosch 116th drill bit. There's the part number there. Uh, it's six inches long. I basically took um, a square. I put a square on the side of the motor. I just, you know, drilled into it gently. I marked. I basically put the put the housing in front of me like this. I marked from here. I looked inside with that hole down in there. I lined them up. Made a mark with a sharpie. You can see the sharpie mark there. And then basically drilled into it and you know um the worst case if you do screw it up you bring it to a guy with a, some of a tig you well you just drill the hole a little bigger uh well tig weld it in smooth it out and then re-drill it um it's not that hard guys like it's you know if you're not confident about it bring someone that you trust or machine shop will do it for probably 20 30 bucks uh, if you're not confident I'll do it but it's a good mod to do if you have your motor apart um the next thing i'm doing right now is also building a puller to pull the crank into the uh, assembly uh a lot of guys just hammer in i don't like doing that because i don't i want this motor to last uh i don't want the bearings being pounded out um so yeah i'll show you the build, uh, the puller making i'm basically using three inch uh, black iron pipe uh one and a quarter inch tube and then basically a power steering puller weld it in and then have it uh an m10 m10 by 1.25 nut in the middle here thread this in and then it'll pull it into the casing instead of pushing it in i've seen guys uh i read a post not long ago basically the guys try to clamp it to, they pushed in they froze the crank and they heated the case up they got it a little all the way in and they started bolting the case together the, the case kind of bind up well they started bolting in but if anybody knows anything about these motors these cranks are pressed together so the last thing you want to do is press on this if you don't have to you want to slide it as, as freely as you can because if you start pushing load on this you start creating a side load on basically this and it starts bending it. So the guy actually put his motor together and it wouldn't turn over. It was seized. It, it was, it actually bent the crank. It actually used to move the pin. So it basically has, has crank removed and then re retimed and then put back in and, you know, waste time. So anyways, guys, hope this helped anybody. Like I said, if you have any questions, post them below, uh, like, and subscribe.